Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the academic procession and the Chancellor. I declare that the 607th Convocation of McMaster University for the conferring of degrees is now in session. Please be seated. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Susan searles Duru, Acting Provost and Vice President Academic. This afternoon, I have the great pleasure of being your Master of Ceremonies, and it is my privilege and honor on behalf of McMaster University to welcome all of you, graduands and guests, to this convocation ceremony. On behalf of the university, I would like to start this ceremony by recognizing and acknowledging that we meet today on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee nations and within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. We must remember that we all have a role in upholding the spirit of this agreement, which urged for the peaceful sharing of Earth's resources. We must also not forget that merely acknowledging our presence on these traditional lands is only a small step on our shared path to reconciliation. I challenge you to consider how we can foster reconciliation among the many peoples that inhabit these lands. Before we start our formal program, may I ask everyone in the hall to switch off any electronic device that may ring or beep during the ceremony. I would now like to call upon our Chancellor, Ms. Sante Smith, to make her own welcoming remarks. Scano, Yahweh. Greetings, honored guests, 
faculty, staff, friends, families, most importantly, graduates. It's a pleasure to be present with you today and share in this exciting time as we mark a milestone in life with acknowledgement and celebration. Today's convocation represents the culmination of a tremendous amount of work and dedication to fulfilling your academic goals. Congratulations, Yoyanale. Graduands, you are the present and future leaders and innovators. What you choose to do with your time has the potential for incredible positive impact locally, nationally, and internationally. I would like to acknowledge the people in this room and beyond who have contributed to your achievement. Take a moment to reflect on the people who made it possible for you to be at this very juncture in life. Hold them in your thoughts, in your body, and say, I'm grateful. Congratulations and enjoy the ceremony. I would like to welcome Dr. Paul Byrne, Dean and Vice President of the Faculty of Health Sciences to the podium to present our honorary degree recipient. Madam Chancellor, by the authority of the Senate of McMaster University, I have the honor to present Mary Law. Today, Mary Law is receiving her second McMaster University degree. She earned her first in 1985, a Master's of Science degree in Clinical Epidemiology and Biostatistics after completing her studies in Occupational Therapy at Queen's University and before earning a PhD at the University of Waterloo. Dr. Law's career began with occupational therapy postings in Kingston, Thunder Bay, and Kitchener, Ontario, before she joined what was then Shadok McMaster Hospitals as a research clinician. She became the director of research for the hospital's occupational therapy department, and then worked with the occupational therapy service at the Waterloo Rotary Children's Center. Dr. Law joined McMaster University's School of Occupational Therapy and Physiotherapy as a part-time assistant professor in 1987, beginning a career that featured progressive academic appointments within the school and also with the Department of Clinical Epidemiology and Biostatistics. She became a professor in 1998 and also served a decade as Associate Dean Health Sciences Rehabilitation and director of the School of Rehabilitation Sciences. Her leadership was instrumental in increasing the size of the school's research enterprise fourfold, and in the introduction of innovative programs, including McMaster's first online master's degree. In 2001, she was appointed the inaugural Mary and Mar John and Margaret Lilly Chair in Childhood Disability Research, and she has been a professor emerita since 2014. Dr. Law's scholarly work, captured in 15 books and 240 peer-reviewed articles, has focused on the development of client-centered outcome measures, the evaluation of interventions with children, the effects of our environmental factors on the participation of children with disabilities, and on the transfer of research into practice. One of her signature accomplishments was guiding the development of the Canadian Occupational Performance Measure that has now been implemented in more than 60 countries. In 1987, she co-founded the CanChild Centre for Childhood Disability Research. Her advocacy for the importance of occupational therapists having the ability to analyze and change disabling environments to allow children with disabilities to participate in daily activities influenced the World Health Organization's 
International Classification of Functioning, Disability, and Health. As an elected member of the American Occupational Therapy Foundation's Academy of Research and the Canadian Academy of Health Sciences, Dr. Law is a fellow of the Canadian of Occupational Therapists. She has earned the Canadian Association of Occupational Therapists Award of Merit, the City of Cambridge Women of Distinction Award, the Queen's University Legacy of Achievement Award, and the Family Alliance Ontario Heart Award for family-centered research. At McMaster University, she received the Faculty of Health Sciences Award for graduate supervision and is a member of the faculty's community of distinction. A lifetime member of both the Canadian Association of Occupational Therapists and the Ontario Society of Occupational Therapists, Dr. Law is an officer of the Order of Canada, an honor she received for her transformational work in occupational therapy, which set the standard for research and shaped clinical practice in Canada. Unfortunately, Dr. Law cannot join us this afternoon to accept this honorary degree. So I am requesting, Madam Chancellor, that I, I have the privilege of presenting you a member of our faculty as a pioneer of education, advocacy, and mentorship, and ask you that you recognize her accomplishments and contributions by bestowing upon Dr. Mary Law the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa in Abstentia. And Dr. Law's remarks will be given this afternoon by her son, Jeffrey Law. By the authority of the McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to confer upon Mary Law in absentia to the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa at McMaster University with all of the rights and privileges pertaining to that degree. I would now like to invite Dr. Law's son, Jeff Law, to deliver her convocation address. Okay. Um, I was asked by my mother, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, to deliver her speech. Um, I apologize for my nerves. As I traveled here today, I was certainly not expecting to be addressing such a large room. Um, I'll deliver her speech verbatim as she intended, so uh, please just picture me as a 69-year-old woman. Um, <laughs> I, would, I would be a little bit shorter, but... Uh, Madam Chancellor, Acting President, honored guests, graduates, family and friends, congratulations to all who are graduating today be proud of your achievements and congratulations to all the family members and friends who are also so proud and have supported each graduate through their learning journey. It's a wonderful honor for me to receive an honorary degree from my home university. I came to McMaster to study for a master's and from the first day I walked onto campus, I knew I had discovered a special place. Not simply somewhere to study, but an environment of open collaboration, lifelong learning and innovation. I hope you also take many positive memories from your time at Mac. Your life, your work and career are unlikely to take a predictable path. Where will you go? What will you do? You graduate at a challenging time in our world. How can you take the learning experiences you have gained at Mac and make a difference and a positive impact. Louis Pasteur said that chance favors only the prepared mind. So you start from a good place. What opportunities will come your way? What will you seek out? With a prepared and curious mind, challenges are met and opportunities are sought out, and that can change our paths. Let me share a story of opportunity and challenge with you. Many years ago, I worked as an occupational therapist in a children's rehab center in a small community in Ontario. A young boy, three years old, who had a significant muscle disease, 
was unable to move his arms or legs with any strength. He could not walk or push a wheelchair. At the time, children's electric wheelchairs were just becoming available. Together with his family, we saw this as a great opportunity, but also a huge challenge as it cost about half of the family's yearly income. His father had insurance through work, so we submitted an application for approval. It was denied. I called the adjuster and he would not budge. He said they'd never done this for a child so young. I emphasized the opportunities that would open up for this boy. The answer remained no. He asked what will happen if he drives it where he's not supposed to go or causes damage. I said that I expected his parents would turn it off. Then he said, I have a three-year-old boy and I would not let him drive an electric chair. I asked, but can your son walk? We ended up getting the funding. That opportunity gave hope to this young man. It opened up his world, hope for movement, but so much more, to go on school trips, to play with other kids, to run his chair up the dining room wall and have his parents turn it off, to go to the pub with his brother, to attend post-secondary education, to work, to marry, and to have children of his own. I've always remembered this young boy, the challenges, but more the opportunities in creating hope, not by changing him, but by changing the world around him. You too will encounter challenges, but you do not have to face them alone. Research tells us that the resilience to meet challenges is influenced most by our environment and community resources. Like the young boy, challenges are met and opportunities created by changing the world around us. Through this, you can build capacity, find hope, and make a difference in your world, our world. Um, if I may ad-lib a little bit, I am myself an, an occupational therapist. Um, and speaking as someone who's kind of 10 years into the profession, please don't lose hope, this hope. It's very easy to become cynical in this world, but it's this hope that helps our clients achieve what no one thought is possible. So I wish you well. We need you. Thank you. Thank you for your inspiring words, Jeff, and congratulations. Please send to your mother congratulations from all of us. Dr. David Farrar, Acting President and Vice Chancellor, will now come forward to present the graduands to the Chancellor for admission to their degrees. Will the graduands please rise? Madam Chancellor, on behalf of McMaster University Senate, I present to you these candidates and those in absentia in order that you may confer the appropriate degrees upon them, and I bear witness that they are worthy and suitable. Graduands, by my authority and that of the McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to admit to those before me today and those in absentia to their individual degrees at McMaster University all of the rights and privileges pertaining to those degrees. My many sincere congratulations to you all. Please be seated. Graduates, I now ask each of you to join me on stage so that the Chancellor and I may welcome you to the McMaster Community of Scholars.
graduands and guests. So that each graduate's name may be heard, it would be appreciated if during the presentation of the graduands, you will hold your collective applause to the end of each degree category. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Alexandria Afonso. Daniel, Brandon Daniel Enrixpo. Carmina Angelica Perez Romero. Louis Patrick Shank. Kanvaldeep Singh. Wenqing Chong. Heather Lee Bullock. Young Jung. Ahmad Firas Halid. Shagoye Donia Razavi. Amanda Basquill. Kristen Burroughs. Frederick Lifangi Ikomi Morfor. Sam Afkani. William Gwynn. Angela Wynn. Stephen Liang. Maud Peru. Carolina Stryaki. Chandak Upagupta. Jazeen Alders. Ashley Bernardo. Amber Ryder. Aaron Lindsay Ziegler. Julie Christine Reed. Kathy Ann Vudarchik. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Biomedical Discovery and Commercialization. Khan Yusuf Balta. Natalie Rivka Cohen. Stephen Douglas Gould. Kai Dan Guan. Anya Kandich. Petru Khodjevich. Krish Kurana. Jacob Angus McKinnon. 
Naveen Sandhu. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Science. Anran Cheng. Smarth Narula. Megan Anna Rottenbroker. Caleb Seal. Mirza Shabhaz Shakil. Damian Tran. Selena Marie Busink. Hayley Carpenter. Kayla Marie Cialini. Laura Collins. Bailey Nicole Felcar. Chara Anna Kelly. Dana Elizabeth Kondo. Jocelyn Michelle Leeworthy. Cassidy Mante Ajay. Sarah Ruth Nyland. Brittany Oliver. Cindy Pilchuk. Brianne Shuit, Saeed Shozab Ahmed, Abdullah Ahmed Al Hamlawi, Dana Bedawi, Sabahat Balaban. Emily Elaine Bryson. Emily Michelle Dugo. Amanda Nicole Giancola. Juliana Hayden Negrin. Ralph Shaw. Noah Lashevsky. Christine Leung. Samantha Lowe. Di Lu. Olivia Marie McGeever. Elizabeth Fisher Milosevic. Hannon Moylim. Jessica Marie Morris. Joshua Jordan Neposlan. Rebecca Sarah N. Kareen Annie Ohaninyan. Romea Paramalingam. Mauli Mahendra Patel. Mega Patel. Elizabeth Ann Patterson Stallwood. Sarah Juliana Paul. Ludmila Barcelos Porto. Raja Abdur Rehman. Lauren Carly Robbins. 
Jimena Rodriguez Arguello. Christine Salib. Lucy Shaw. Daniel Michael Sholock. Anwesha Sikder. Gajani Sivapatham. Matthew Skelly. Jacqueline Slomovich. Ashley Snow. Anna Socha. Max Solish. Madison Elizabeth Taylor. Serena Tejpar. Grace Maria Terry. John Tien Hu Vu. Helen Elizabeth Wallace. Aloka Vijayasuraya. Neil Richmond Lu Wu. Hunsta Yang. Clara Micheline Zakharko. Haja Abu Al Rob. Hasuk Binipal. Mihir Bhatt. Laura Childerhose. Nazari Dviernik. Saurabh Gupta. Ayesha Ashraf Javed. Ahmed Mohammed Anas Makhdum. Salmi Tahsin Noor. Pakiza Sadat. Alison Midori Takayoka. Nathan Elliot Cupido. Chante Emily Beatrice De Freitas. Dilshan Ishara Pieris. Asma Shafiq. Mary Angela Woodward. Joanna Carol Kunanen. Michael Rain D'Agostino. Luca Di Gius Giuseppe Antonio. Emily Elizabeth Hartung. Lillian Ho. Patricia Kitala. Jamie Catherine Noch. Catherine Ann Elizabeth Mackett. Gayatri Nair. Maria Nguyen. Mark Ramkeer Singh. David Rodriguez. Loshana Sokalingam. 
Vidushi Swarup. Ekaterina Krilova Todorova. Mariam Vasegi Shanjani. Brendan Robert Ferrer. Harry Narenda Patel. Rebecca Elizabeth Bushby. Lea Costa. Regina de Lottenville. Rachel Ann Halboom. Sarah Lynn Junkin. Amandeep Kaur. Kafe Kelvin Leung. Joanna Linsdale. Jonathan Neufeld. Osahan Osawe. Nicole Eileen Parko. Georgia Radulovic. Caitlin Ann Reeves. Amaran Dabar. Kinley Dorji. Sabrina Hossein. Shireen Kathab. Nicole A. Last. Jasmine Ray Martin. Srikant Nair. Joshua Young. Madam Ch Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Science Occupational Therapy. Saeed Raza Ahsan. Brittany Suzanne Eldworth. Cheryl Ann Balzer. Lauren Bender. Melanie Vegas Carvello. <laughs> Judy Chang. Farah Chow. Alicia Gwendolyn Corcoran. <laughs> Caitlin Cowper. Justina Louise Cox. Jessica Teus Kronk. Kaylee Danihi. Noria Dawn Deacon. Alana Mary Eileen Delaney. Victoria Di Giovanni. Margaret Teresa Flood. Nicole Catherine French. Jacqueline Christine Gallivan. Karen Graham.
Kaylee Gruber. Huda Hajaj. Lauren Gabrielle Halawishka. Aaron Harvey. Amanda Nicole Herzberg. Misha Hoxtable. Brittany Elena Carnupas. Kara Emily King. Natalie Keat. Daniela Kovacevic. Vicky Lee. Stephanie Ann Lapaline. Anna Lizowska. Samantha Joyce Mahquarel. Laura Susan McDonald. Huma Malik. Jessica Erin Marquez. Michelle Ashlyn MacArthur. Sharmini Nagulain Dran. Laura Nelson. Kristen Leanne Page. Kira Posterski. Alicia Pangley. Parul Razdan. Sydney May Richardson. Kelly Margaret Russell. Jyoti Sahu. Celine C. Selena Singh. Hannah Thompson. Fatima Tuan Kachil. Rachel Helena Weeks. Madeline Weir. Yusam Liana Wong. Philip Michael Zabowski. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Science Physiotherapy. Mansoor Aman. Raquel Bachman. Amanda Grace Baxter. Natalie Elizabeth Bertrand. Lafpreet Singh Bati. Taryn Blino. Nathan Lucas Centrito. Jasmine Uying Chow. Rebecca Chow. Julia Marie Colwell. Jessica Antonia Connolly. Emma Conran. Mercy Denqua. 
Shireen Devarpana Jazzy. Laura Ann Fetty. Emily Jacqueline Gardner Fisher. Claire Gooden. Nicholas Luke Geiler. Joshua Alexander Hepburn. William A. Joran. Brittany Kalfka. Daniel Kim. Anisha Da Silva Kinarath. Natalie Joy Kohler. Tress Kruspa. Green Lassen. Amanda Marie Lee. Melanie Elizabeth Leons. Heather Elizabeth McCauley. Aislinn Joan Campbell McPhail. Katrina Suzanne Majetic. Matthew Dean Mascola. Stephanie Marie McCoy. Madison Ann Ginny McKinney. Emily Eco Mecky. Joanna Miller. Mari Irene Muller. Kevin Mac Muncaster. Liam Andrew Newlands. Ariane Simone Payne. Justin Ronald Parker. Alexandra Jordan Pitchler. Tristan Robert Kenneth Richardson. Christopher Rigby. Carly Ann Roser. <laughs> I repeat. Carly Ann Roser. Brandon Pedro Rosario. Frank Rubino. Nicholas Savatari. Alicia Marie Satimi. Justin Gregory Small. Eva Eve Marianne Soon. Beth Song. Anne Catherine Stokes. Christian Mackenzie Tuka Chick. Yimo Wong. Courtney Lynn White. Miranda Jelaine Weens. Connor Todd Willis. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the first degree of Masters of Science of Speech Language Pathology. Justina Assad. Christine Elizabeth Black. Christine Judith Kalbeck. 
Victoria, Sharon. Courtney Marie Sazonski. Hannah Jane Coulter. Kennedy Gervais. Jessica Elizabeth Gillia. Sarah Marie Glazuski. Sarah Nicolette Graham. Leah Horn. Cadence Yowski Ip. Claudia Cornelia Krushelniska. Nadine Cynthia Kunzi. Lindsay Lawrence. Megan Lowry. Daniela Mana. Tatiana Medakovic. Rachel Elizabeth Pond. Ruman Sandu. Shanna Train. Miranda Pauline Wayland. Madiha Wine. Derek Yim. Adriana Zoccoli. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Public Health. Soha Anjum. Guj Pindajit Bajwa. John Batista Fortuna. Kayla Jane Lucier. Kathleen Dawn Montour. Harman Singh Sandhu. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Doctor of Medicine. Dana Jennifer Austin. Ahmed Khan. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Emily Brain. <laughs> Megan Giberson. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduate of the degree Bachelor of Health Sciences, Midwifery, Sophia Albalki. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Health Sciences, Honors, Jack Chen. Madam Chancellor, 
May I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Health Sciences. Megan Elizabeth Brown. Kevin Jia Chi Chen. Michael Coomer. Mohammed Alameen Damer. Anthony Dow. Natish Kumar Jingra. Hong Tian Dong. Rebecca Ann Heyman. Kira Yaja Hu. Grace Huang. Sana Huda. Rahul Kapoor. Iman Karani. Matilda Kim. Francis Lau. Wei Edward Lee. Randy Mao. Yasna Madian. Emily Norris. Soan Park. Prasida Parasarathi. Sara Punjani. Dorothy Chan. Yuan Yuan Chu. Angelica Rivas. Hania Sheikh. Gersharan Sohi. Kyle Michelle Soulier. Shreya Sriraman. Chun Yi Tan. Christopher Tarzi. Samantha Vizva. Nina Vujovic. Amy Wong. Jawa Emily Yang. Grace Yu. Morgan Yuan. Kevin Zhang. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Health Sciences Physician Assistant. Rachel Alu. Amna Ansari. Ryan Michael Baker. Kyle Edward Belzerite. Ayla Chowdhury. Meredith Ann Cooper. Reem Isa. Paula Alexandra Jescu. Virpal Kusa. Paige Jade Marie Losha McClintock. George Mena Marcos. Nini Nguyen. Lana Lauren Fenster. Haley Pru. Jespinder Sandu. 
Yasmin Shama. <laughs> Khadija Siddiqui. Christina Darlene Wiggers. Let's give one more round of applause to all the newest graduates of the class of 2019. I would now like to introduce Dr. Ahmad Faraz Khaled, a graduate of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and Health Policy, who will be delivering the valedictory address. To Chancellor Santi Smith, President David Farrar, Provost Suras, Suralis Giro, I practiced that many times before. I apologize for that. The astounding faculty of McMaster University, dear friends, loving families, good afternoon. What a pleasant day it is to be standing here speaking on behalf of the graduating class of 2019. I'm truly honored to address you today and I would be remiss not to start my speech by thanking those who without their support, this graduation wouldn't have happened. Our friends and our families. On behalf of myself and my fellow graduates, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We are most grateful to you. I'll be honest with you, I felt a lot of pressure trying to think of what I can share with a group of highly intellectual individuals that has not been heard before. I find it especially challenging when others look to me for guidance when I'm still trying to figure out my own journey. What I want to share with you today is a personal mantra of mine that is grounded in my travels around the world and by the incredible tapestry of people that I have met and continue to learn from. My mantra has become, show up and do the work. See, the thing is, I come from a family of exceptional individuals. And finding a space where I could excel was not easy. My mom is a homemaking, multitasking goddess who carries her role as a mother, a friend, and wife with utmost pride. My late father, My late father was fearless beyond life itself, a man who chased his own luck. Growing up, my dad earnestly told my siblings and I, find something you love doing. If you love selling falafels, then go and sell falafels. <laughs> now, although I love eating those deep fried chickpea balls, despite the heartburn I get from eating them, I knew that was not what I wanted to do in my life. And so my struggle to figure out what to do was a constant theme and a challenge. At the age of 17, while on a flight back to university for the Middle East, I read a gossip article about a celebrity doing an internship at the World Health Organization in Geneva, Switzerland. And my first thought after reading that article was, oh my God, how cool to spend the summer in Europe. <laughs> but I was determined to find out more about this internship opportunity. And so the minute I landed, I went on the dial-up internet and typed, what is WHO? I found a few key individuals who I thought were doing exciting work that really interested me. I emailed them all, thinking to myself, there is no way anyone will ever answer me. And to my surprise, a for, uh, to my surprise I got an answer from Dr. Jose Martinez, the former director of the Child and Maternal Health Department, telling me to send him my first ever resume. I still remember running frantically in the snow to career services, begging them, please help me create my first ever resume. Keeping in mind that I was only in my first year of university and had zero work experience, unless of course you count the one summer where I pretended to be interested in my dad's field of work and worked as a phone receptionist. It didn't go very well. Jose extended an invitation for me to join him for the summer to work on approaches for the implementation of community-based neonatal care interventions. Leading up to my departure, I felt fearless. I was just excited to show up, 
to experience new things, and to get some work done. My internship at WHO resulted in two things. First, it seeded my work ethic and continuous hunger for knowledge. And second, it led me to appreciate the importance of finding a mentor in life, whether on a professional or on a personal level. My personal mentor has always been my mother, who I'm so lucky to be sharing this special moment with. Mama, say hi to everyone. <laughs> my mother was one of... <laughs> <clears throat> My mother was one of the main reasons I joined the Health Policy PhD program at Mac. As a student at McMaster, I had the opportunity to travel as a Queen Elizabeth to the scholar to the borders of Syria and Lebanon. As part of my research, I wanted to better understand the health needs of Syrian refugees. I could still feel the knots on my stomach on that long drive to the dangerous borders. But the minute I showed up, I knew that was where my work needed to be. My time with the Syrian refugees confirmed my beliefs that safety is a basic human right. Health is a basic human right. For some countries, this means providing quality care, affordable health coverage, and social protection for all refugees and migrants, regardless of their legal status, age, gender, occupation, or religion. I would like to end my speech today by saying that it is evident that our reality now is one where resources are becoming more limited. Opportunities are scarce, and the competition to get them is fiercer. But in spite of today's challenges, I firmly believe that showing up is half the battle. The rest is dependent on how prepared you are to do the best that you can do, even when the experience is sometimes not what you thought it would be. To be excellent in life, you must be consistent. Graduating class of 2019, I ask of all of you today as you forge ahead to remember your young, fearless spirit, to always show up and allow yourself to be seen and heard by others. The education you acquired from Mac gives you the chance to be seen. Now let your courage be your guiding force. Remind yourself that it is okay to say your stress that you need help, that you are seeking support. Lean on your peers and your inner support circles as it takes a village to stand tall. I know that I'm no exception to the incredible people in this room today, that many of my fellow graduates here have tremendously rich stories. Continue to build your life story one experience at a time. Find inspiration in your work in your personal lives, in your research, and in your worldviews. And finally, find ways to share your story with others. Thank you all, and congratulations. Thank you, Ahmad and Mrs. Khaled. That was an incredibly encouraging and inspiring talk. Um, I would now like to introduce Dr. Paula Byrne, Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences, who will present the Distinguished Alumni Award for the Sciences. The recipient of the 2019 McMaster University Distinguished Alumni Award is Alba DiCenzo. An exemplary educator, researcher, and author, Alba DiCenzo is internationally known for her pioneering work in evidence-based nursing and is one of Canada's leading experts on advanced practice nursing including the roles and effectiveness of nurse practitioners and clinical nurse specialists. Her work and advocacy have influenced policy related to the development of nurse practitioners at the provincial, national, and international levels. Dr. DiCenzo graduated from McMaster's School of Nursing in 1974, 
before earning a Master's of Science degree in Design, Measurement and Evaluation, also from McMaster University in 1981. She then completed her PhD at the University of Waterloo. She joined McMaster School of Nursing faculty in 1978 as a lecturer, later becoming a professor with a joint appointment in the Department of Clinical Epidemiology and Biostatistics. She held the Canada Health Services Research Foundation, Canada Institutes of Health Research, that is CHSRF, CHIR Chair in Advanced Nursing Practice for a decade, working to increase the number of nurse researchers in Canada. She also served as the director of the CHSRF, CIHR, Ontario Training Centre in Health Services and Policy Research, a consortium of six Ontario universities working to provide graduate education for those interested in becoming health services researchers. The co-founder of the Canadian Centre for Evidence-Based Nursing, Dr. Dicenzo also founded and became lead editor of the Evidence-Based Nursing Journal, published by the British Medical Journal and the Royal College of Nursing in the United Kingdom. She was first author and of the influential textbook, Evidence-Based Nursing, a Guide to Clinical Practice. Dr. Genzo, who retired as Professor Emerita in 2013, is a fellow of the Canadian Academy of Health Sciences and an honorary member of the Nurse Practitioners Association of Ontario, as well as a recipient of the Canadian Nurses Association Centennial Award. She was inducted into the Faculty of Health Sciences Community of Distinction in 2016 and is a member of the Order of Canada, receiving this honor for research in evidence-based nursing for her contributions to the development of nurse practitioners. McMaster University is proud to recognize Dr. Albert Dicenzo of the class of 1974 and 1981 with the Distinguished Alumni Award for 2019. Thank you, Dr. O'Byrne, for your kind words. Chancellor Smith, Acting President Farrar, McMaster faculty, fellow alumni, honored guests, family and friends of our graduates, and especially you, the graduates. I would like to thank the McMaster Alumni Association for this award. On behalf of the association, I extend a warm welcome to you, the graduates, who are McMaster's newest alumni. Through our alumni association, you will learn about the many ways that you can remain engaged in the vibrant McMaster community. Receiving this award has given me occasion to reflect on my years at McMaster, and I would like to speak about that briefly. I am a first-generation daughter of Italian immigrants who came to Canada in 1951 with very little. My parents were among the first Italian immigrants in our city to support their daughter to leave home and to attend university. It was not an easy decision, and I am eternally grateful to them. When I graduated, from McMaster 45 years ago with my nursing degree, I already had a clear sense of where my career was heading, having been offered a full-time position in public health nursing. It was a role I thoroughly enjoyed and one I expected to continue indefinitely. Four years into the position, I received an unexpected call from my Dean of Nursing at McMaster Dr. Dorothy Kurgan, inviting me to come and teach in the School of Nursing. They were short a faculty member. 
I am, am embarrassed now to tell you how reluctant I was to even consider her offer. I was very happy in my clinical role and had never considered teaching. She invited me to meet with her to discuss the role, and to my surprise, she had a series of interviews booked for me. I went from one to the other, explaining why I didn't want the job. <laughs> to add more pressure, my public health nursing director encouraged me and offered to hold my position for a year in case I wanted to return. And so, in 1978, I began a new journey at McMaster and never looked back, one that would last 35 years, more than half my life. As new graduates, you too will no doubt face unpredictable twists and turns in your career journey. And while you may now have a clear plan, I encourage you to remain open to unexpected opportunities. You are our future clinicians, researchers, educators, and policy influencers. Your work will affect people's lives in dramatic ways. To that end, I offer three pieces of advice for your consideration. First, keep learning. The world celebrates the 150th anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi's birth this year. He said, live as if you were to die tomorrow, learn as if you were to live forever. From him, we learn the importance of critically examining our own ways of thinking and doing, of learning from others and from our past mistakes, and above all, ch excuse me, changing our views when proven wrong. Second, use your knowledge to make a difference. McMaster is a leader in evidence-based practice. Be it at the clinical or policy level, arm yourself with strong research evidence to enhance quality of care and to influence policy. Your strong voices are needed in many areas, such as improving access to health care, protecting our treasured universal healthcare system, and enhancing it to include essential health services, such as universal public pharmacare. Third, respect everyone's value. You will leave here today with a priceless investment, a degree from one of the world's top 75 universities and Canada's most research-intensive university. There are many less fortunate individuals who have not had the opportunities that you have had. As Patrick Dean, our former president, has stated, personal fortune is inseparable from the communal good. We live in a world of growing income inequality and a global refugee crisis. With the privilege of higher education comes the expectation that your future actions will aim to benefit, value, and honor all of humanity, regardless of our differences. And now I offer you my warmest wishes for a happy and successful career and I leave you with Ralph Waldo Emerson's definition of success. To laugh often and much. To win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children. To earn the appreciation of honest critics and to endure the betrayal of false friends. To appreciate beauty. To find the best in others to leave the world a little better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition, to know that even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is the meaning of success. Thank you very much 
for the honor of addressing you on this special occasion. Congratulations, Alba, and thank you for what is surely precious advice. May I now invite our acting president and vice chancellor, Dr. David Farrar, to deliver his address. Again, congratulations to McMaster's graduating class. I know how hard you've worked to get here. There'll be much hard work to come, but today you get a chance to pause and to celebrate the amazing things you've accomplished. I just want to say a very few words about small steps and giant leaps, and today is about both. Today, each of you walked across this stage and received your degree. It literally only took a few small steps, but by the time you had completed that, you had made the giant leap from a student to an alumni, and that changed everything. Why small steps and giant leaps? It's because I was alive before people walked on the moon. And if you consider that day, July the, 12th, July the 20th, 1969, it's one of those days that changed everything. You probably know the story. Neil Armstrong climbed down from the lunar lander and he spoke what is one of the most famous quotes of modern times. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. You may not know that Armstrong left a word out. He was supposed to say that's one small step for a man, which of course would have made a lot more sense. I only mention that because if you tripped or stumbled as you walked across the stage today, don't worry about it. You're in very good company. Every generation has its goals and its aspirations that seem impossible until the moment that they're achieved. For my generation, it was the moonshot, and I shared in that dream as it became closer to a reality, and the day Armstrong set foot on another world is etched in my memory. Today, 50 years later, it still inspires me. So what about your giant leap? Your world is very different from the one when men walked on the moon. In some ways, there's been much progress. For instance, if the moon mission were to happen today, there's some chance that the crew would include more than just white men. But today, there are also different challenges. 50 years ago, we had the Cold War. Today, we have climate change, the rapid advance of artificial intelligence, and a slide into author authoritarian societies in many parts of the world. Universities have changed too, but I believe our vision for higher education continues to prepare our current graduates for the world that they face. You have more choice, more freedom, and more power than any previous generation. Technology is a part of that. Your cell phones pack more computing power than NASA used collectively to put people on the moon and they're a, they're a source of unlimited information and entertainment. You also have the opportunity to become the best version of yourself, to discover, to embrace who you are, to live, love, learn, work, and experience the world in your own terms. But the question is, what will you do with that freedom, that choice, that power? There are practical answers. Start a business, patent a new drug, help the weak, guide the strong, give back to your community, rise through the ranks, lead, innovate, entertain. These may seem like small steps, but they're real and they're valuable things to do. What I want, you what I want to encourage you, though, is to reserve some energy for the giant leaps, for the possibility of achieving a moonshot. Don't be daunted. By the, chase of, by the pace of change, even though that pace accelerates every day. Technology, social values, entertainment, a relentless news cycle, politics, the job market, climate change, research and education. I look at how much the world has changed over my lifetime, and I know how much more you will see in your lifetime. But you have the skills and the knowledge that have prepared you for that. Maybe your moonshot will have to do with global warming or 
inequality or social injustice, medicine, health, technology, but given the pace of change, it will probably be something we can't even imagine. So how do you prepare for that? Look back over your years at McMaster, and I hope you'll see the answer. You prepare by being adaptive, by being diligent, collaborative, multidisciplinary, ambitious, and determined. By challenging assumptions and focusing on what needs to be done. One last point. When you receive your diploma from McMaster, you'll probably note on it that there's only one name, yours. But I suspect many people have helped you get to this day, your family, friends, teachers, and mentors who supported, inspired, and cheered you on. So I hope you take some time in the near future to thank all those people who helped you make it to this afternoon. The end of your studies, the granting of your degree may seem like you're crossing a finish line, but you're actually just beginning. Today you took a small step, your giant leap is yet to come, and I wish you the very best in that journey. Once again, congratulations to the class of 2019. I myself am a McMaster alumni, and I look forward to seeing where you go from here. Mary, Law, and Alba, congratulations on your accomplishments and your amazing contributions. Ms. Alba eloquently said that we are now, that you are all now graduates and members of this wonderful group of alumni the McMaster family. Dr. Farrar, you've given us a lot to think about. I really like the analogy of small steps and giant leaps. I know that I personally will remember those words of wisdom. Graduates, take those wise words with you as you go. My very best wishes to you all. Congratulations. I would ask that you please remain standing at your seats until the academic procession and the graduates has left the hall. Please join now in singing our national anthem, and after the singing of the anthem, this convocation stands adjourned.